Hello, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and today I'm going to talk about how to use the winter sowing process to grow vegetables. I've sort of touched on little components of this throughout the videos in the series uh, so far, and if you want to know more about winter sowing, what it is, how to do it, all of that, check out the other videos in the series. But today I'm going to add a little bit more to what I've discussed before. I'm going to talk about um, things to consider, my own experience last year, and any recommendations I have kind of coming out of that experience. I, I'm, for starters, I'm in um, Zone 7A in Maryland, and so most of my experience will apply to people who are in like Zone 7 through 9, but I think there are still some lessons learned here that can be applicable to anybody. So, but I just wanted to give my location for context. So for starters, let me say that if you um, follow the other steps in this process, you should have success growing vegetables. But I'm going to talk about some nuances to consider when deciding what to winter sow and when. Now I will, <clears throat> before I go into kind of my process for when I plant up things, I will say that if you're planning on winter sowing all your vegetables at once, that's fine. Do it. But if you're planning on, oh, if, I, if I'm going to be spacing out my planting over time, why don't I just do it in a way that's a little bit more logical in case those things grow or whatever, the ones that I'm going to need first, I should probably plant first, right? And the plants that you're going to need first for transplanting are going to be the ones that are cool weather vegetables. I'm talking about like um, spinach or arugula. I mention arugula everywhere because I love it. But things like that that like to grow in the cool weather are going to be ones you're going to be transplanting into your spring garden first. And therefore, logically, they should be one of the first sets of jugs that you plant up. The second set that I plant up and often along with the spring vegetables are the vegetable plant seeds that take a long time to grow. Peppers are technically a perennial plant and they're very slow growers. In fact, often you don't get the peppers until fairly late in the summer once they're actually in the garden. Um, another one is eggplants. They're also slow growers. and I think they might also be perennials, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So those I'm going to winter sow at the same time or fairly close to when I winter sow my cool weather vegetables. But my summer vegetables like tomatoes, um, cucumbers, squash, things like that, uh, winter, winter squash, things like that, I'm going to winter sow those last. And for me in Maryland Zone 7A, that means late March to early April, maybe even mid-April, depending on how temperamental the weather is being at that time. Um, there are a couple other things to consider. One is, does that plant? So if you look on, if you look on the, um, packaging for your seeds, often they will say when to start inside, which is the same tip as like when to winter. So, right. If it says not recommended, if it says that plant does not like to be transplanted, my husband just came out of his room. If that, if that package says those, those plants do not like to be transplanted. That is a warning to you that if you decide to winter sow those plants, that you will have to be super careful to not disturb their roots or disturb their roots as little as possible when you transplant them. Plenty of people have transplanted and have grown successfully things like carrots and beets and other things that say they don't like their roots disturbed. But, um, you know, kind of, you do have to be a little bit more careful with them if you decide to grow them. And for me, I just didn't go through that. I just went ahead and directly sowed them. Uh, I didn't have success with them because I hadn't planted them in a sunny place, my carrots and uh, beets. So that wasn't the fault of the process. That was operator error, as I've talked about before. Um, the second thing to think about is, are any of the vegetables that you are considering growing ones that grow super fast? If you're calling my um, flowers, video, I talked about how zinnias, for example, tend to grow super fast. And really, if you're trying to kind of figure out how many jugs you want to have of stuff, and you're trying to, you know, plant less than or just as much as necessary, or you have a limited budget or whatever, plant zinnias directly in the garden. Well, it's the same for a lot of other vegetables that grow super fast. The one advantage you do have to starting them in the jug is that they will be a week or two ahead of the ones that you directly sow. So it's kind of a gamble on what you prefer. And if you have a super short uh, spring season or a super short summer season, then a lot of times winter sowing can help you get a head start on that. But for me, uh, for example, I this last year um, planted up uh, cucumbers 
and peas. And the cucumbers, unfortunately, I plant them super early in the jugs. And because we had a super warm early spring, but then a bunch of frosts, those, those plants actually ended up being super stressed and just didn't really perform well when they were transferred. The other thing is peas, my uh, sugar snap peas and my shelling peas, um, they did not do great. I ended up directly sowing a bunch of pea seeds and they did wonderful. The thing I will add here though, is for the peas, that was the first set of real vegetables other than like lettuces, like kales and other greens that I had transplanted last year. And so I think some operator error was involved in that because I had heard that if you um, put the uh, plants in water, the roots will separate easy and they do. The thing nobody mentioned to me is don't put them in ice cold water. Plants don't like cold shock. <laughs> So that might have been what hurt my peas more so than the transplanting. So again, you could try growing peas, but then again, I also grew them directly sown and they did just fine. So that's up to you. Now for a quick review of what I grew last year using the winter sowing process and what I didn't grow using the winter sowing process and why and how they did. So I'm going to start off with the cool weather vegetables. I grew radishes, early scarlet radish, early scarlet globe. They were delicious. Um, and I did winter sow these. Oh, wait, no, let me think. Actually, I need to check my journal on that one. I think I directly planted those because they're um, so quick growing. Yeah, they have a 30 day thing. Yeah, I direct sowed those. I remember that now. Um, one I did grow from uh, winter sowing process was this tennis ball lettuce. I wasn't a huge fan of the lettuce myself. I do like butter type lettuces, but this one just didn't have enough texture or crunch for my tastes and they were small. And one thing I've learned about gardening is get bigger vegetables. Don't go with the small ones. If you have a tiny garden, you want to make the most use of the space. But that's a whole other topic for another video. Another thing you've, I've already mentioned, if you've watched my other videos, I grew kale using winter sowing and it did great. Did fantastic. I did arugula, believe it or not, for winter sowing. I also direct sowed these. Both processes worked well for them. And I also did some black seed, in which I got a hole in the bottom and rashly duct taped outside when I was... <laughs> In the summer, but uh, in the spring, but I did black seeded Simpson lettuce and it did fine. The trick with lettuces is, is you transplant them fairly early in the process, like when they get their first true leaves. What are true leaves, you say, if you don't know that? True leaves are so when a plant, when a plant of any kind first sprouts, those first leaves look nothing like the, the leaves that you'll see on the plant later on when they're in the garden. They're the, just the sprouting leaves. And then what's called the true leaves that actually look like the plant are the second set that come up. When you see the true leaves come up, they will look like how, you know, when you look at pictures of the plant leaves, that's what they look like. And that's called true leaves. And that's usually the time at which it is safe to transplant. And I'll talk more about that later when I actually have something to transplant. I will show you. All right, so now I'm going to switch to my warm weather veggies. Let me get into my box of that. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to try to be quick on this. Um, cucumbers. I did Boston pickling cucumber. Um, they did okay. They, they are another one that I think that this year I'm going to actually direct sow them. Cucumbers grow super fast. They aren't a huge fan of being transplanted. And I think the fact that I um, let them stay in the jugs too long and they got really stressed and they just weren't able to withstand the pests as well and I think that was a big problem I had this year with growing cucumbers so this year I'm going to directly sow them but I will say the few that I did get from the plants were delicious another one was early fortune this year I'm going to try a new one called miniature white cucumber that should be good all right peppers I grew through the winter sowing process and they did great I did jalapenos jalapenos fish peppers and if you haven't tried these before they are so cute and so amazing and look they have little stripes oh yeah and then this was actually my favorite pepper jimmy nardello peppers oh these things are so good they're delicious they're sweet the skin is thin so they saute really well um and they're fairly large pepper so these all did great with the winter sowing process. Again, I'm going to start them early um, around the same time as the spring vegetables this year. As for tomatoes, the only, I only grew two types of tomatoes through the winter sowing process this year. Um, I did a third one through a seed I got from somebody that was called uh, Gardener's Delight that also did well. That's a cherry, but I don't have a picture of it. I did green zebra tomatoes. Oh, these are delicious tomatoes. They did really good with transplanting even though they were stressed in the jugs because I 
of that weird shift in the weather. And I also did Cherokee tomato, um, Cherokee, purple Cherokee tomatoes. They were also amazingly delicious. And I'm going to grow them both again this year. I also grew in the backyard, I grew a number of green beans, including, where is that? <laughs> where is my green bean thing? Including um, Blue Lake bush beans. These are good producers. And you know what? I directly sowed these. Yeah, I directly sowed these because they grow fast. Same with my dragon tongue bush beans. So if you're gonna plant green beans, they do great just direct sowing. You don't need to you don't need to transplant them. They did just fine that way. Um, and then I did a bunch of different squashes, and they did good transplanting. I'm not not actually gonna review them because the squ the vine borer. Um, and the squash beetles just decimated them. And so it's really hard to know whether they performed well because of the winter sowing. I will say this year, if I grow squash, which I am going to grow at least two varieties, I'm actually going to direct sow the seeds, but I'm going to cover them and also treat them with some diatomaceous earth, which is supposed to help protect against those, those critters. So that is the basic. Oh, and there is one more that I grew using the winter sowing process, cabbage. Um, this is a small cabbage called Charmant. They were delicious. If you check out the video where I harvested one of the two heads that I grew. And they're, they're good for small gardens because they're fairly small to begin with. All right, so I hope that this video was useful to you. If there are any vegetables I didn't mention or any questions you have, please let me know. If there's anything you've done really well that I didn't mention, um, that you've done really well with winter sowing, please also mention that. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you aren't already a subscriber, please consider doing so, especially if you enjoyed this kind of content. And otherwise, I'll see you next time.